This week, I'm going totally off script and plan for our five-minute Fridays, but I hope you enjoy it. Let me know what you think. Like this video if you like the story, and give us a subscribe so you can see all of our adventures. Now, on to a little story about what happened to the signers of the Declaration of Independence. Did you know that five signers were captured and tortured to death by the British as traitors? Twelve had their homes ransacked and burned. Two lost their sons serving in the Revolutionary War, and another had two sons captured. Nine of the 56 fought and died from wounds or hardship of the Revolutionary War. They signed and pledged their lives, their fortunes, their sacred honor. What kind of men were these? 24 were lawyers and jurists, 11 were merchants, nine were farmers, and large plantation owners, men of means, well-educated, but they signed the Declaration of Independence knowing full well that the penalty would be death if they were captured. Carter Baxton of Virginia, a wealthy planter and trader, saw his ship swept from the seas by the British Navy. He sold his home and property to pay debts and died almost in rags. Thomas McLean was so hounded by the British that he was forced to move his family almost constantly. He served in the Congress without pay and his family was kept in hiding. His possessions were taken from him and poverty was his reward. Vandals or soldiers looted the properties of Ellery, Hall, Clymer, Walton, Gwinnett, Hayward, Rutledge, and Middleton. At the Battle of Yorkton, Thomas Nelson Jr. noted that the British General Cornwall had taken over the Nelson's home for his headquarters. He quietly urged General George Washington to open fire. The home was destroyed and Nelson died bankrupt. Francis Lewis had his home and properties destroyed. The enemy jailed his wife and she died within a few months. John Hart was driven from his wife's bedside as she was dying. Their 13 children fled for their lives. His field and his grits mill were laid to waste. For more than a year, he lived in forests and caves, returning home to find his wife dead and his children vanished. So we take a few moments to enjoy the 4th of July holiday and silently thank these patriots. It's not much to ask for the price they paid. John Adams and Thomas Jefferson lived to become presidents of the United States and they both died on the same day of the same year. Remember, our freedom has never been free. Thank you so much for listening. I don't know who authored this. I got it off of a Marine friend of mine. I appreciate you taking the time to listen to it. I wish you the greatest 4th of July you've ever had. So until next time, keep the sunny side up, keep the rubber side down, and have yourself an utterly awesome 4th of July.